Hello everyone, my name is Jesus Rueda Becerril. I'm a postdoctoral fellow at Purdue University at the Department of Physics and Astronomy. Today I'm going to talk about the numerical approach that I have developed in order to study radiative cooling in relativistic outflows. The out outline of my talk is first talk about the introduction, uh, talking about the astrophysical object that I would like to discuss today. Then I will talk about the numerical method that I have developed. Um, then I will talk about the astrophysical application of this uh, numerical tool, and I will finish with some conclusions. Uh, the astrophysical object that I would like to study today is our gamma ray bars. These objects are the most energetic um, that have been observed up to date. These uh, objects are uh, super energetic explosions uh, that show different phases. In the first a few seconds they show most of the energy um, and afterwards they uh, show a decay in the light curves. Um, it is thought that uh, in this later stage, the afterglow, um, accelerated electrons interact with uh, photons in the surrounding medium or uh, photons in the same uh, outflow producing uh, high, ultra high energy photons through inverse Compton scattering, transferring part of its energy uh, to those photons. Uh, the inverse Compton scattering cools down these electrons, affecting the distribution of, of, of them. Uh, however, if these electrons are extremely energetic, then no longer we can apply the um, Thomson, classical no Thomson uh, regime, we need to apply the Kleinishina corrections to the radiative cooling. However, these um, corrections are, are highly nonlinear and therefore numerical tools come handy in order to um, consider these effects in an evolutionary system. Uh, as a way of testing and comparing on the right hand side, the numeric approach with uh, some analytical um, approximations for two different radiation fields, black body and monochromatic. Um, in the blue line, we can see the Thomson regime. In the green line, we can see the um, analytic. And in the orange, we can see the numerical approach. So we can see that uh, the orange uh, line transitions from the Thomson to the Kleinishina and even to the deep Kleinishina regimes. And as an application, um, I have taken the best fit uh, for the gamma ray burst observed by MAGIC last year in January, and uh, I have taken the a fireball, fireball model for gamma ray bursts and uh, and evolved a distribution of particles uh, with my code and taking into account the Kleinishina corrections. So in the uh, in these plots we can see in solid lines the simulations considering only Thomson uh, cooling and in the dashed lines we can see the effects with the, um, the results of the simulations with the Kleinishina corrections. As we can see in the for the electrons energy distributions, at uh, the first um, stages of the um, of the explosion, Kleinishina corrections has uh, a lot of effect in piling up uh, high energy electrons. These uh, automatically uh, can be translated into light curves as we can see in the first 100 seconds of the light curves we can see a uh, disparity of the, between um, the light curves uh, of the high energy bands. And also in the spectral energy distributions we can see um, some disparities in, in many different bands. So as a conclusion, um, numerical approach matches both the deep Kleinishina and Thomson regimes with the smooth transition between both. This numerical code um, with the Kleinishina corrections have tested, has been tested in an evolutionary scenario, such as the fireball of the model of uh, gamma ray burst. 
the Kleinishina a cooling plays an important role during the first stages of the blastoid, as, as we have seen, and during most of the afterglow stage of the gamma ray burst, radiative cooling is purely Thomson. Thank you.